Previously on Transformers University, we explored the first two years of the Transformers toy line, and now we're heading into a world where the events of Transformers the movie need to be reflected in plastic form. And we'll discuss the Autobot side of that equation right now on Transformers University. Hello, my friend, and welcome to episode 50. Three of Transformers University. I am your host, Anthony Brutali, owner, operator, madman behind TFU.info, the toy archive, the website, the social media, and more, and of course, this podcast. And today we are talking about the 1986 toy line uh, from the Autobots perspective. So we're going to talk about all the good guy characters and toys uh, that came out for 1986 and it's an interesting year for Transformers toys because it is a combination of late season two and movie slash post movie uh, season three characters so there there's a couple of different things that Hasbro needed to cover they needed to cover the the stuff that they introduced on the back end of season two so those are the uh, the imported Scramble City uh, combiners and uh, and a few things like that. Plus, they needed to uh, perpetuate the line a little bit and resell some of the older figures. And then they also needed to establish some movie characters and establish a few of the show characters uh, that we would see by the end of the year 1986. And the weirdness of the 1986 toy line... uh, is certainly not lost on Transformers fans. So, for a little bit more insight into the 86 line, I'm going to toss it over to my friend, Senate Pruitt, with more. Well, 1986 was such a weird mishmash because you had these, I guess the Protectobots and Combaticons were unused stuff that would have come out in whatever the line that the Aerial Bots and whatnot were intended for. Um, but on the other hand, you have these really weird vestigial things with the movie guys where you've got Ultra Magnus, who's just a diaclone dude, and then you've got Cup and Hot Rod and Blur and Cyclonus and Scourge who are trying to like reverse engineer that fluoro dairy design aesthetic into a toy, and it makes for a really... It makes for a really hodgepodge year of toys, almost in the same way that um, the 2001 Rid line was a weird hodgepodge of toys. You know, where you had these spy changers and you had these, well, there's the, the Combaticons again. But then you had these weird new Japanese guys to go with it. So it's, it's kind of an interesting mixed bag. It's like the last of the leftover Diaclone and then the first of the, well, we ran out of old Japanese toys to repurpose guess we got to figure this out for ourselves. And that uh, interview was produced by my good friend Gabriel Owens, the Salty Sea Man, at a gathering on New Year's Eve of a bunch of my uh, online Transformers friends uh, that I was unfortunately not able to make it to. Uh, But at that event, (laughs) my friends uh, put together this great roundtable to discuss uh, Transformers the movie in 1986 uh, and and create some uh, audio for this show. Uh, but you can hear the roundtable in its entirety over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash tfuinfo. It's available for our $3 and up uh, patrons. So uh, if you want to hear longtime Transformers fans talk a whole bunch about Transformers the movie, go on over there now and check it out. So let's first talk about what carried over from 1985. Uh, so the figures in the 86 line that carried over. Uh, Jetfire, Omega Supreme, uh, the Deluxe Autobots, Whirl, and Roadbuster, Perceptor, and the Dinobots, who both had, um, that's all five Dinobots, uh, who all were in the movie, and uh, Blaster, also in the movie, and a handful of the um, minibots, actually, it's all of the 85 minibots, so Beachcomber, Powerglide, Warpath, Sea Spray, Bumblebee, and Cosmos. And I think those are a good place to start. So with uh, the minibots, not only did we have the carryover, not only did we have Bumblebee for a third uh, consecutive year, um, 
there were also uh, six new minibots, and five of them were retools of the original molds. And so uh, we had Swerve, which was a uh, retool of Gears. We had Tailgate, which was a retool of Wind Charger. Pipes, a retool of the Huffer mold. Outback, a retool of Braum. And Hubcap, a yellow retool of Cliff Jumper, which gets very confusing when you start factoring in Cliff Jumper, the yellow variation of Cliff Jumper, and uh, the bumper, Bumble Jumper figure uh, that was also packaged on Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper cards. And the trick, if you ever really need to figure out if it's uh, Cliff Jumper or Hubcap in a pinch, um, their faces are different, number one. But uh, if you don't know what the face is supposed to look like, Cliff Jumper has a spoiler, Hubcap does not. And that's uh, the easiest way to do it. And finally, the sixth uh, minibot in the series uh, was someone we saw in the movie. That's right, so a new mold, new tooling minibot is what rounds out uh, the group with Wheelie in there. And uh, interesting note here is he is the only minibot, uh, well, I guess he's the only minibot engineered to be a Transformer uh, so far, uh, since the rest are either tooled off of uh, old microchange molds or just are direct imports of microchange molds. Now, additionally, we mentioned Blaster was available as well. Uh, and Blaster being available in 1985 was never available with uh, cassettes. Uh, he did have an opening chest, but no Autobot cassettes to put in. And that changes uh, with two cassette two-packs in 1986, and that is Steeljaw and Rewind. Uh, Steeljaw being the, uh, I guess he's a lion, uh, along with Rewind, who's a black humanoid robot, and then uh, Eject and Ramhorn. Ramhorn is a rhinoceros, and Eject is uh, a blue uh, recolor of the Rewind uh, figure. Uh, or Rewind is a black recolor of Eject. Take your pick. Additionally, we have uh, some Scramble City figures being imported. Now, uh, our episode on Scramble City, the story... Uh, is back at episode 46 if you want to give it a listen. This is basically the uh, original Combiners line as introduced in Japan and then um, as part of Transformers and then also introduced here. And so that is a lot of the characters we've covered in the fiction. So the first of those being uh, Superion and the Aerial Bots. And those were available both individually and as a gift set. Look, the Look, the Aerial Bots! Look, the only the aerial bots have this kind of teamwork. Aerial bots raise their battles to destroy the evil forces of the guns. The Transformers more than meets the eye. The Transformers. Nobody can stop Minotaur. That's superior. The Transformers sold separately from Hasbro. You know, it's interesting on these commercials uh, in 1986, there, there's two things that's fairly consistent. Uh, one is that the commercials are narrated by Optimus Prime and Megatron as voiced by Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. Uh, so uh, it's nice hearing his voice attached to some of these characters, which later on is pretty cool because Optimus doesn't necessarily interact with those characters in Transformers the movie. So hearing his voice uh, address some of those names is uh, pretty neat. Uh, same for uh, Megatron. The other thing I've noticed <laughs> in the 86 commercials in particular, uh, they adapt the lyrics to the Transformers theme song a lot and sometimes very liberally. Uh, so we will take a look at that as well because it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really funny. But uh, that Superion commercial is uh, also the Menasaur uh, Stunticons commercial. It's interesting with these commercials, there's usually an Autobot versus Decepticon component, so it's one commercial for uh, two sets of toys. And that is no different for Defensor, uh, the combined form of the Protectobots, and that is available regularly, uh, individually, I should say, and as a gift set. And uh, we'll do that commercial in the next episode, uh, where uh, Defensor fights Trypticon. And just to break down the teams here real quick, the aerial bots that were available, the limbs, air raid, skydive, 
Fireflight, Slingshot in the main body, Silverbolt, and for Defensor, the main body was Hotspot, and the individual limbs are Blades, Groove, First Aid, and Streetwise. Now, as I mentioned, the Defensor Protectobots commercial does share uh, a spot with Trypticon, and his usual opponent in the fiction is Bruticus, and Bruticus shares a commercial, and we'll do it here, with the Autobot City Metroplex, which was available with Scamper, Six Gun, and Slammer. Only we have a military attack group like the Combaticons. Transform Combaticons and attack the new Autobot City. Autobots, this is our new city, Metroplex. It can transform into a battle station and then transform again into the gigantic Metroplex himself. But the Combaticons can combine to form Bruticus. Decepticons attack! Transform Metroplex! The Transformers! The Transformers from Hasbro. And, you know, the one thing about Metroplex that isn't really mentioned in that commercial and uh, is often forgotten about the figure is how well it was made to interact with other figures from that time. So yes, he was large, he was a city, uh, but his ramps accommodated the minibots very well. His ramps also accommodated the Scramble City limbs, uh, particularly the Protectobots, uh, very well. There was a helipad in his city mode, which was perfect for, for blades. And then lastly, as far as Scramble City components interacting, his shoulders and his knees had uh, connection points for the Scramble City bots. So you could put uh, additional arms or just attach them to his legs uh, in some way to be weapons. Uh, I've never really worked out a good uh, set of combinations, uh, though I will tell you this from my own uh, childhood mistake. Uh, those jo- those connection points are not jointed, so they do not rotate. So if you put an arm into his shoulder, put it facing out, uh, do not turn it, you will twist the head off of one of your toys. And I'm not the only one who uh, the play pattern and the fun of Metroplex uh, appeals to. So for more on that, we're going to toss it over to Ben Yee of BWTF.com with more. I'm a sucker for any Transformer that has a base mode or some type of mode where smaller Transformers can interact with it. I I love that play pattern, whether it's the Micromasters or Overlord, any of those. I think that is one of the best play patterns any toy line uh, can have. And Transformers has done it very well over the years. Um, He he was also a Christmas present, so he was a a huge surprise and uh, an unexpected one. Um, So, yeah, definitely metroplex and knowing my aunt who i remember is the one who got it for me she christmas shops way ahead of time so that metroplex had my name on it probably around halloween <laughs> and uh, um it, 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 i remember opening the box and just being stunned because my parents didn't make a lot of money so there was no way they could have afforded that and and metroplex was depending on where you got him he could range anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars you know in new york city uh, in that age so very expensive compared to what your typical transformer cost. And um, I, I remember being very surprised when I opened the gift because, you know, the, the shape of the box is just this big rectangle, right? So I'm cracking it open expecting like, you know, a sweatshirt <laughs> or something like that. And uh, getting a transformer at all was already amazing, but getting one that big who could interact with other transformers was absolutely stunning. And please check out Ben's website. It's one of the best and longest running around www.bwtf.com Ben's world of transformers. And you can touch base with him on Twitter at BWTF underscore Ben to say hi. So an oft overlooked interactive feature as well is that the main bodies for the combiners uh, in the Autobots case here, Silverbolt and Hotspot also had, um, base modes, I guess you can call them. Uh, Silverbolt turned into kind of like a launching platform and um, Hotspot had a repair bay mode. And I'm pretty sure there's a way to interact those with Metroplex, but I've never actually done it. So uh, maybe that's something I'll look up and then if I can find it, I'll I'll tweet it out on the Twitter at TFU underscore info. Now, on to another figure that had a lot of interactive 
capabilities, and that is Ultra Magnus, the city commander. Decepticons are attacking our launch site. Where's Prime? He's on Savatron. It's up to you, Ultra Magnus. Autobots, transform and power. When Ultra Magnus rolls into action, he takes on Decepticons. Meet Ultra Magnus. He can transport four Autobots into battle. But once there, he transforms into my powerful Autobot commander. The Transformers. Robots in disguise. The Transformers, sold separately from Hasbro. And coming this summer, Transformers the movie. You've never seen anything like it. And these Ultra Magnus commercials are really interesting to me. Uh, so, starting with uh, the commercial, uh, just with the dialogue, he is uh, certainly pre-events of the movie in this commercial. Um, he is noted as the city commander uh, on his tech spec and in some of these commercials that we will cover. And I think that's also important because that one ties to Metroplex and Autobot City in the movie. But uh, it leads me to believe this figure was released sometime after Season 2 ended, but before the movie was released, and the commercials didn't want to spoil uh, the film. So it's it's really, really interesting to see that. He's certainly one of the last Diaclone molds to be brought over, and uh, is actually just a retooling of the original Optimus Prime toy. So Ultra Magnus's cab uh, is the same cab, uh, that was the uh, original Optimus Prime toy. His trailer is entirely different, uh, and his Diaclone version of the trailer was uh, the car carrier uh, was dark red with uh, some dark blue and black. Ultra Magnus in the final Transformers version uh, is uh, light blue with red and white. Now, his front cab and rear trailer can combine into a larger robot mode. That is the uh, robot that you see in the cartoon, uh, that is the one that is emulated in the fiction. Uh, very rarely is he shown as the cab robot. Now, another interesting thing in these commercials is that uh, he is shown carrying cars, and that's one of the features of the toy. It can carry Autobot car-sized cars, uh, four of them, and you can use them kind of to, uh, you know, tow figures into battle or from battle or whatever you would like to imagine. Uh, it's a car carrier. You've seen them on the road. Um, the thing is, in almost all of the commercials that I've seen, it's usually four specific Autobots that are drawn on him. Red Alert, Trax, Smokescreen, Jazz, actually five, and Hot Rod. Uh, Hot Rod and Jazz kind of uh, interchanging. Uh, the thing I find really, really interesting here is that Red Alert and Trax, according to the storyboards of Transformers the movie, as we discussed uh, back in episode 50, were supposed to be in a scene with Ultra Magnus riding on the back of his vehicle mode uh, before attacking uh, and uh, basically dismantling Devastator. Uh, Smokescreen, on the other hand, um, and maybe this is, plays why into the decision was made in the film to replace Smokescreen with Wheeljack. Smokescreen was supposed to be one of the corpses on the ground in the film. So I'm left to wonder if these uh, 1985 Autobot car toys were also still kind of um, lingering on the shelves and trying to be sold into 1986 or into the middle 1986 uh, and we'll see more of Ultra Magnus in some of these other commercials uh, as we go. And like I said, they will have uh, usually Red Alert and tracks uh, on him. And of course, he will also be in a commercial with Galvatron, but we'll do that in the next episode when we cover the Decepticons. Now, speaking of Autobot cars, we had three new Autobot cars introduced in the 1986 tour line, and those are three of the main characters from the film. And more Autobots join Optimus Prime. Cup reminds me of the battle on Beta 4. Hot Rod. Watch my smoke. Blur. They see me. Now you don't. But soon a new Autobot leader will arrive. Introducing Rodimus Prime. No one can take on the Decepticons like Rodimus Prime. The Transformers. Robots in disguise. The Transformers. Each sold separately from Hasbro. And I guess I should have said uh, four of the main characters from the film. So Rodimus Prime gets... Uh, advertised in this commercial as well, the new Autobot leader. But yes, we get we get new Autobot cars, and of course there is uh, 
hot rod, cup, and blur. Now, there were some manufacturing changes uh, early on uh, with this figure, uh, with all three of them, and and Rodimus Prime for that matter. So uh, a lot of them were released early on with metal toes, or um, yeah, metal toes or feet. I guess it's kind of the best way to explain it. Uh, some of them had rubber wheels, such as Rodimus Prime, uh, which were then replaced with plastic wheels. Uh, so if you're searching out one of these uh, figures, to figure out which one you want because they're they're out there. They're not terribly rare one way or the other. There is a certain level of differences for Cup, Blur, Hot Rod, and Rodimus Prime from just the 1986 releases. Now, two more of the big characters from the film shared a commercial, and these, this time they're both Autobots. In spaceship destroyed by Decepticon fire, Springer, the toughest of the Autobot triple changers, crash lands on planet Junkion. Hurry, hurry, operators are standing by. No welcome way of hell, stranger. The Transformers for the ice. Junkion Ricka transforms from motorcycle to robot. And triple changer Springer transforms from car to helicopter to robot. The Transformers. <laughs> The Transformers, each sold separately from Hasbro. I find it fun that uh, they're actually shown battling each other in this commercial. And it, the other thing you can see with the Springer and Rekar commercials, that Rekar is voiced by Frank Welker with a really kind of wacky, uh, I guess, Australian accent. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you have Rekar, uh, who is a motorcycle uh, a junkie on motorcycle, and then Springer, the triple changer, who is a both a helicopter and a car. But he wasn't the only triple changer to join the Autobots that year. Pinned down one time too many by Astro Train and Blitzwing, the Autobots build their own triple changers. Autobot triple changers battling the triple changers of the Decepticons. Triple changer Sandstorm transforms from dune buggy to copter to robot, and Broadside transforms from carrier to jet to robot to fight Decepticon triple changer Octave, who transforms from tanker to jumbo jet to robot. Transformers! The Transformers from Hasbro. So two more triple changers, uh, giving the Autobots three. And in that commercial, uh, there is also Octane, the Decepticon. We'll cover him uh, next episode. Uh, but that rounds out the triple changer lineups on both sides to three and three. The other two here are Broadside, uh, the triple changer who becomes a jet and an aircraft carrier, uh, but cannot land on himself, I guess. Uh, and... Uh, Sandstorm, the uh, dune buggy slash helicopter. And again, this is uh, kind of where we shift to characters we will see in Season 3. I mean, Metroplex as well uh, earlier on, but uh, and certainly the Protectobots uh, have a role in Season 3. But uh, Sandstorm and Broadside, they show up uh, here and there. Um, Broadside less so, uh, but Sandstorm does have uh, at least one Spotlight episode in Season 3. And then one more character that uh, actually gets a lot of love in Season 3 and is introduced in 1986 is Skylinks. Look, it's Predator King! Me and Grimlock think we in big trouble! Not to worry, here comes Skylinks! Transformers, more than me! Make Skylinks, this ferocious motorized Autobot triple changes from Space Shuttle to Bird and Lynx and then combines to form Skylinks. Predator King's attacking! Skylinks will stop them! The Transformers, batteries not included, from Hasbro. Now, Skylinks is a uh, space shuttle, and he uh, separates into a Lynx uh, cat mode uh, and a... And a robotic bird for his other half. That's like the top half and the lower half of the space shuttle, and they can actually combine into a um, a uh, cat-legged bird uh, creature. Uh, and I found it funny that the commercial actually calls it a triple changer. Now, the last thing worth mentioning on this toy is Skylinks was one of the other figures brought over by Hasbro from a company called Toy Box. Now, first uh, first character they brought over from that brand was Omega Supreme. And Skylinks is from uh, the same manufacturer and designers as well. And that, that wraps up the Autobots, but doesn't necessarily wrap up everything I'm going to talk about in this episode. So the last three figures that probably fit 
I guess on the good guy side, I'd rather do them in this episode than the Decepticon episode, are uh, three toys from a line called First Transformer. Um, I believe in Japanese it translates to uh, My Transformer. This was a line meant for kids ages one to three. Really super simple, uh, blocky, chunky Transformers. And uh, there was a jet, a dump truck, and an F1 racer that did not get names in the U.S., but uh, did exist on toy shelves. Now, in Japan, they were released a year later, and the only reason I'm kind of mentioning this early for Japan um, is because they did get names in uh, in Japan, and uh, it was basically uh, Jet Kun, Dump Kun, and Racer Kun, and Kun is kind of a... Um, an affectionate term in Japan. Uh, so whereas uh, san after someone's name is basically like a term of respect, uh, kun means kind of like uh, something they call little young boys, like uh, like almost like young Padawan, uh, without getting too deep into uh, the Japanese language uh, that I do not know and don't want to misspeak about. Uh, that is the, the rough of it. It is kind of neat, though, is that these figures do have their own faction symbol, and eventually Jet Kun uh, made it into a piece of official fiction. Uh, but that is a story for another time. And that will wrap up this edition of Transformers University. I am your host, Anthony Brucalli, owner, operator, madman behind TFU.info, the Toy Archive, the social media, the YouTube channel, and of course, this podcast. If you like the show, please swing on by to our Patreon, patreon.com slash tfuinfo. You would have been able to hear this episode way ahead of everyone else. In fact, I am working on this one and the next episode and probably will have uh, have them both available to my Patreon subscribers uh, in the first week of March. And chances are you're going to be hearing these at the end of March. So... Uh, we are way ahead of schedule right now, and my Patreon students are really reaping the benefits of that. And of course, you can get that far ahead by simply pledging a dollar a month. And even when I'm not ahead of schedule, you will receive this show at least 24 hours ahead of the rest of the world. And of course, if you don't want to give directly, you can help out the show by using our Amazon links. tfu.info slash Amazon. It'll take you to Amazon.com. And anything you buy from Amazon thereafter, uh, they kick back a couple of pennies our way. Of course, you can swing on by our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tfuinfo. Subscribe, watch some videos. Uh, every time those commercials play, they help us out as well. Finally, if you want to reach out to the show, you can catch me on Twitter at tfu underscore info. That's usually where I am. Shoot me a message. Say hi. Tell me you like the show. Tell me you hate the show. Tell me what you'd like to hear on the show. I'm always open to hearing new ideas and suggestions. We're on Facebook. Facebook.com slash TFU Info. Instagram.com slash TFU Info. I post my daily desk bot from work every day. Uh, so you can always see a fun toy just about every day. And finally, if you want to go the old school route, you can email the show at info at TFU.info. Don't forget to swing on by the Tory Archive, www.tfu.info, for uh, the longest-running Transforming Tory Archive in the world. Next time on the show, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be talking the Decepticon half of 1986, all the evil toys for your collection uh, that came out in that year. So come on back, but until next time, I'm Anthony Brucalli. See you.